Um, <clears throat> hello everyone, my name is Thomas Guru. Welcome to our final lecture at Glen Rock High School. Um, I am very fortunate to be given the opportunity by my cooperating teacher, uh, as well as the school administration, to give these lectures. Today we are going to dive into the foundations of Chinese history, particularly the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. Chinese civilization is one of the oldest continuous civilizations in the world, and the people of China pride themselves on their long history. The first Chinese uh, dynasty was the Xia Dynasty, uh, which began around 2207 BCE and fell around 1766 BCE. There is no archeological evidence of the Xia Dynasty. However, it is highly likely that it did exist. Evidence of its existence uh, is shown by the appearance of dense populations as well as city palaces that developed by the end of the third millennium BCE. During the second millennium BCE, the city palaces formed centers of power based on the possession of bronze weapons. Much of what is known about the Xia Dynasty is shrouded in myths and legends. The Shang Dynasty overthrew the Xia Dynasty in the 16th century BCE. Their territory included the entire central plain and even towards the Yangtze River Valley at certain points. Inscriptions provide a full list of Shang rulers uh, that stretches back before the foundations of the dynasty. This includes 37 rulers and 18 generations. It corresponds with the list preserved through tradition and appears in the Shi Ji, uh, uh, written by Sima Qian at the beginning of the first century BCE. The history of the Shang dynasty was also recorded in the Shu Jing, or book of documents compiled during the Warring States period. The Zhou overthrew the Shang dynasty between 1050 to 1025 BCE after the decisive battle at Muye uh, in 1046 BCE. The Zhou dynasty lasted about 800 years and it is known as the longest lasted uh, recorded dynasty of China. They were the first state to unify the Yangtze and Wei river valleys. The first period of the Zhou dynasty is commonly known as the Western Zhou dynasty circa 1046 to 771 BCE, also known as Sijo. After a foreign invasion in 771, they moved their capital from Haojing to Changzhou in the east, hence the name Eastern Zhou Dynasty, which lasted between 770 to, 10, to uh, 256 BCE, also known as Dongzhou. Changzhou was built by Zhou Gong for the remains of the captured Shang nobility. Haojing is located in Shanxi province uh, near Xi'an, also called Chang'an. Changzhou was re later renamed to Luoyang uh, during the Eastern Han Dynasty, and it is located in Henan province to the east. The history of the Eastern Zhou Dynasty is known as a time of conflict and instability, and it was split into two periods, the Spring and Autumn and Warring States periods. The Zhou Dynasty lost control over their subject states, after this foreign invasion, which led to the conflicts of the spring and autumn period. Commonly known as the first emperor, Qin Shi Huangdi, uh, also known as Zhao Zheng, uh, 259 to 210 BCE, unified much of China during the Warring States period. His goal was the centralization of aesthetic and cultural traditions. He's commonly known for the construction of the Great Wall as seen on this slide. However, the original Great Wall was not comparable to what is seen in the present day, which is more of a monument that was built during the Ming Dynasty, that is 1368 to 1644 CE. The original Great Wall was made of a rough rammed earth platform with a wooden frame below wooden palisades, and it was built by peasant labor. The intention of these fortifications was merely to mark boundaries and to function as a way to regulate and monitor the nomads to the north. It was not a continuous wall. It would stretch for about 25,000 miles, and then it would have sections where natural barriers were used in place of fortifications, such as mountains. The Qin Dynasty was short-lived and only lasted from 221 <laughs> to 206 BCE due to the lack of a qualified successor for Qin Shi Huangdi. <coughs> Qin Shi Huangdi expanded the borders of the Qin Empire south towards Indochina and northeast towards Korea and Manchuria. His principal concern, however, was the northern frontier, 
where the nomads known as the Xiongnu of the Eastern Steppe harassed the Qin Empire. The depiction of his reign in such a negative light comes from Sima Qian, circa 145 to 86 BCE, who recorded his history during the Han Dynasty, that is 202 BCE to 220 CE. The Han Emperor Gao Zhu, who uh, ruled between 20, uh, 256 to 195 BCE, overthrew the Qin Dynasty and promoted Confucianism, uh, which was banned during the Qin Dynasty. However, some scholars praised Qin Shi Huangdi uh, for unifying China after such a long period of conflict. The ruler named Zhou Wenwang, uh, who ruled between 1152 to uh, 1056 BCE, was the first ruler of the Zhou state. He formed alliances that allowed them to gain the power necessary to rival the Shang dynasty. He attacked the province of Henan, uh, while the last Shang ruler, Zhou Xin, also known as Di Xin, uh, 1105 to 1046 BCE, was distracted by a war with the Huai barbarians. The son of Wen, Zhou Wu Wang, um, who ruled between 1046 to 1043 BCE, built the capital at Haojing uh, and defeated Di Xin at Muyue, north of the Huanghe, or also called the Yellow River. Wen and Wu were respected as liberators by the former inhabitants of the Shang Dynasty, as well as the barbarian people. Wu became the founder of the Zhou Dynasty, he legitimized his victory over Di Xin uh, with the common concept in Chinese culture known as the Mandate of Heaven. This idea states that the divine <coughs> in heaven gives the right to rule. Uh, the divine can also withdraw that right and give it to a new dynasty. The ruler of the Zhou dynasty was called Tianzi, or Son of Heaven. Zhao Zheng, also known as Qin Shi Huangdi, changed the title to Huangdi and proclaimed himself to be the first emperor. The Zhou Dynasty is portrayed as having just rulers in most historical texts, in contrast to the Shang Dynasty, who are depicted as corrupt. The Zhou Dynasty followed a Feng Jian system of governing. In this system, the rulers of the Zhou Dynasty gave land to relatives and trusted officials, uh, so, and such a style of governing kept things stable for a while. However, over time, as loyalties and relations grew further apart, the Zhou Dynasty lost control over this system and the ruler of the Zhou dynasty remained an isolated figurehead leader of China in Changzhou, also known as Luoyang. The states therefore gained autonomy, disregarded the ruler of the Zhou dynasty, and began to rival one another. Many Chinese people, such as Confucius, reminisced about the Western Zhou dynasty as the good old days. The Western Zhou dynasty was dealing with corruption prior to the events leading to the spring and autumn period, and the Zhou royal house was losing control over its vassal states. The ruler Li of Zhou, uh, who ruled between 857 to 842 BCE, was removed from power prior to the spring and autumn period, and a regent took control over the government until his son, the ruler Xuan of Zhou, who ruled between 827 to 782 BCE, came to power. The fall of the Western Zhou dynasty was caused by domestic political problems and foreign military threats. In 771 BCE, the corrupt ruler, Yo of Zhou, abandoned his wife, the daughter of the powerful ruler of Shun, uh, for his favorite concubine, Bao Si. Enraged by this insult, the ruler of Shun sacked the capital at Haojing uh, with the help of his foreign ally, the tribe of Shen Rong. The Zhou dynasty moved their capital east to Chengzhou, later renamed Luoyang near the Luo River. Uh, Danji, commonly known as Zhou Gong, uh, built it as a military garrison many years earlier. Ping, the son of the daughter of the ruler of Shun, became the new ruler of the Zhou dynasty from this new capital acknowledged by four rulers, uh, including the ruler of Shun. Another son of the ruler Yo of Zhou uh, claimed to be the rightful ruler of the Zhou dynasty. He was acknowledged by several rulers and his capital resided in the city of Hui. The two claimants rivaled for legitimacy between 770 and 750 BCE. The Qin state recognized the ruler in Luoyang as the rightful ruler and played a major role in vying for his legitimacy. The Qin state conquered the city of Hui in 750 BCE, thus ending this rivalry.
Kunqiu, uh, also known as the Spring and Autumn Period, began in 771 BCE and ended in 481 BCE. The names Spring and Autumn and Warring States were created from works of literature written during these periods. The Spring and Autumn Annals are a basic listing of events dated by season. They were recorded in the state of Lu between 722 to uh, 481 BCE, and it recorded matters of foreign and domestic affairs. The first three entries began with the first year of the rule of Yin of Lu. Uh, commentaries were written later that elaborate on basic details to give us a bigger picture. According to the Zuo Zhuan, a commentary of the Spring and Autumn Annals, there were about 148 states during the Spring and Autumn period. However, many of these states are irrelevant, and there are about 15 noticeable ones. These states include Xi, Chu, Jin, Lu, Qin, Zheng, Tao, Wu, Yue, Su, Song, Wei, Chen, Tai, and Yan. Uh, however, the major states during this time were generally Qin, Chu, Xi, and Jin. The states conducted war amongst themselves. However, they still recognized the Zhou rulers at, uh, who would, they would mainly avoid conflict with. During this period, there were multiple hegemons known as Ba, essentially leaders of China since the Zhou dynasty was too weak to keep the peace. The ruler Huan of Qi, who ruled between 685 to 643 BCE, also called Xiao Bo, was the first of these hegemons. Later, the Wu and Jin alliance became the most powerful and the rulers of Jin became the hegemons. However, the ruler of Jin was weak and the power resided in the clan warlords. During the reign of Guang, also known as the ruler He Lu of Wu, uh, who ruled between 514 to 496 BCE, uh, the Wu state became so powerful that it surpassed the power of any previous state uh, during this period. However, their weak ally, the Jin state, remained hegemon. In 496 BCE, the ruler of Yue died in He Lu and his son Fu Cha conducted a campaign to invade the state of Yue. The new ruler of Yue was Gou Jian, and at a decisive battle, he ordered three men to harass the army of Wu, and then to kill themselves. While Wu's army was distracted, the soldiers of Yue flanked Wu's army and forced them to retreat. At this battle, He Lu was wounded in the hand. This wound would later become infected and fatal. Realizing his death was coming soon, He Lu told his son Fu Cha to avenge his death. He successfully invaded Yue and captured Gou Jian. Gou Jian begged for his life, offered his service and his wife as a concubine. Against the guidance of his advisor Wu Zhe Su, Fu Cha accepted and signed a peace treaty with the Yue state. Fu Cha did not trust Wu Zhe Su like his father did and appointed another advisor to replace him. In 489 BCE, the ruler of the Qi state died and Fu Cha set his eyes to the north. Wu Zhe Su advised that the Yue state was a greater threat and that Fu Cha should prepare for war against the Yue state instead. Fu Cha did not listen to this advice and launched a successful invasion of the Qi state. This further, uh, further his distrust of the advice coming from Wu Zhe Su. In 485 BCE, Fu Cha planned another invasion of the Qi state uh, and this time to sack their capital. He conducted a naval invasion of the northern Shandong Peninsula, uh, near the capital of the Qi state. Wu Zhe Su once again warned about the U.S. state, uh, and his, his advice was once again ignored. Wu Zhe Su greatly believed this would be the end of the Wu state, and he fled to the Qi state with his family. However, Gou Jian of the U.S. state was now preparing for war, and he sent bribes to Fu Cha's ministers to speak positively of the U.S. state. When Gou Jian heard about Wu Zhe Su's betrayal, he sent him a sword and told him to kill himself. Wu Zhe Su thus killed himself in disgrace. His last words were a warning of invasion of Wu by the U.S. state. This infuriated Fu Cha, and he threw Wu Zhe Su's body into the Yangtze River. A shrine near the Yangtze was built in remembrance of Wu Zhe Su by his admirers. In 482 BCE, Fu Cha of Wu became the hegemon acknowledged at a meeting in Huangchi by the Zhou royal house uh, and other states. Gou Jian uh, took advantage of the absence of Fu Cha from the Wu state and invaded, killing his son. 
Fu Cha was forced to sue for peace and regretted not listening to Wu Zexu. This war resulted in the destruction of the Wu state. After this war, warfare accelerated in scale, leading to the Warring States period. Zhang Guo, uh, also known as the Warring States period, began in 481 BCE and ended in 221 BCE. At the onset of the Warring States period, the major contending states were Chu, uh, Wu, and Yue, all residing in southern China and considered foreign to the Zhou culture. The transition between the Spring and Autumn and Warring States period is signified by the destruction of the Wu state, the abandonment of the hegemon system, and the goal of unifying China. The Warring States period involved larger and more organized states, and by the 4th century BCE, only seven sizable states remained. Uh, these were Zhao, Yan, Qi, Wei, Xin, Han, and Chu. No specific date or event represents the end of one period and the start of the other. 481 BCE was the end of the Spring and Autumn period according to the Chen Xiu, or the Spring and Autumn Annals. Gou Jian, the ruler of Yue, successfully invaded Wu in 476 BCE. In 473 BCE, the capital of the Wu state, fell after being besieged for three years. Fu Cha hanged himself and Gou Jian, respectively, buried his body, uh, but executed his prime minister for accepting the bribes from the U.S. state. Gou Jian became the last hegemon after defeating Jin and Xi and died in 465 BCE. Thereafter, the U.S. state played a minor role. In 453 BCE, the Jin state finally collapsed due to the lack of stability with a weak royal house and constant civil wars. It was split into four clans, that is Han, Zhao, Zhur, and Wei. After the collapse of the Jin state uh, and the fall of the Wu state, the major states were Wei, Han, Qi, Zhao, and Qi. By 296 BCE, Qin and Qi became the most powerful states. The Qin ruler claiming to be the emperor of the west, and the Qi ruler claiming to be the emperor of the east. Qi's growing power was deemed as threatening to the other states. Therefore, Qi's biggest rival, Qin, formed a league with Wei, Chu, Yan, Han, and Zhao to wage war on Qi in 284 BCE. During 284 BCE, Qi also prepared to form a league to attack Qin. Chu was one of these states willing to join this league. Therefore, Qin attacked Chu and occupied their capital, Yancheng, as well as most of their western regions. The power of the Qi state began to diminish as a result, and Xin became one of the most powerful states. Xin conquered Zhao in 228 BCE uh, and became the most powerful state. They continued onward to conquer Wei in 225 BCE, Chu in 223 BCE, Yan in 222 BCE, and Xi in 221 BCE, thus ending the Warring States period and the unification of China under Qin Shi Huangdi. Sun Wu, more commonly known as Sun Wuzi, or Sun Zi, who died in 497 BCE, was the most famous and influential general during this period. The Chinese character Zi is used as a sort of title for great figures during this period to signify them as masters in their respective fields. Such as Kong Zi, or Kong Fu Zi, also known as Confucius, Lao Zi, and Meng Zi, uh, also known as Mencius. Confucius was the first master, or the first Zi, hence the name Kong Fu Zi. Sun Wu was given the name Sun Zi because of his fame and renown in battle. He was so popular that people still study the book attributed to him in the present day, the Sun Tzu Bing Fa, also known as the Art of War. Sun Tzu's Art of War has had a great impact on not only China, but the entire world. And on the slide, you can see a copy of the Sun Tzu Bing Fa written on bamboo strips during the Han Dynasty. Most ancient Chinese texts were written on strips of bamboo slips connected with cords. Uh, this is why ancient Chinese characters are written from top to bottom and right to left. Oracle bones are one of the earliest forms of Chinese writing found by archaeologists 
and he composed the oldest form of historiography in China. Yishang Dynasty is well known for using oracle bones in large numbers. The use of oracle bones, divining stalks, and tortoise shells used to decide future events uh, declined during the Zhou Dynasty and was replaced by a new system described in the I Ching. This method used broken and unbroken lines to decipher the future. Uh, the name of Sun Tzu's book does not directly translate to Sun Tzu's Art of War. A more correct translation would be Master Sun's Military Methods. Furthermore, the book goes beyond the scope of just war. It includes the entirety of the military institution as well as its involvement in statecraft. The Sun Tzu Bing Fa was not written by Sun Tzu. It was written around 330 to 320 BCE by an anonymous author. The typical variant of the book consists of 13 essays attributed to Sun Tzu. The author refers to Sun Wu as a master, or Tzu, because he wants to elevate him and the military methods associated with him uh, to the same level as the rituals and governing morality discussed by Kong Fu Tzu, also known as Confucius. Sun Wu was a fitting choice for the author to attribute the book to, because Sun Wu lived during the same time as Confucius, uh, who gives, which gives the book the, its reputation and legitimizes the claim that Sun Wu is a master. The book begins with the phrase, and I quote, Warfare is the greatest affair of the state, the basis of life and death, the way or Dao to survival or extinction. It must be thoroughly pondered and analyzed. The emphasis on the importance of warfare shows the way in which the author tries to elevate the topic uh, to that of morality as discussed by Confucius. The book is literally an attack on the morality taught by Confucius. One of the key assertions of the book is the idea that a general should use the military in the same way a master swordsman wields a sword. Confucius was born in Chufu in uh, the Lu state around uh, 551 BCE and died around 479 BCE in the state of Lu. In the present day, it is part of the peninsular province of Shandong uh, which stretches out into the Yellow Sea in the northeastern part of China. Many of these sources that we have about Confucius are contradictory and uh, unreliable, and nothing is known for certain about his life, including the information that is presented here. Most of our knowledge comes from his students, students of his students, or people who were closely connected to him. His goal was to re restore the harmony which existed in the foundation of the Zhou Dynasty. Both the author of the Sons of Bing Fa and Confucius believed that government positions should be appointed to qualified individuals. However, that is the only value in which they could possibly agree on. The Lu state was generally seen as culturally superior to the other states and continued to use the same cultural rituals and learning techniques as the early Western Zhou dynasty. Confucius himself revered the founders of the Zhou dynasty and detested the constant state of conflict of this period. His family claimed to be descendants of the Shang dynasty. However, there is no evidence to support this. His father died while Confucius was still young and his family was not wealthy. Regardless, he still managed to get a good education. He valued self-improvement and knowledge. Confucius, Confucius inherited many ideas and the Chinese did not refer to his school of thought as Confucianism. The term Confucianism was actually created by Westerners around the 19th century CE. The Chinese call it Ru Jia, or School of Scholars, or Ru Jiao, Teaching of the Scholars. Confucius had his students study certain texts to attain enlightenment. These texts are referred to today as the Five Confucian Classics. During the Han Dynasty, they became the standard curriculum for the civil service exams. The Han Dynasty called all scriptures and all classics from every culture, Jing. The sixth classic, which was on music, was lost possibly during Qin Shi Huangdi's reign. The five classics, or Wu Jing, uh, written, between, written by Chinese scholars before the Qin Dynasty, uh, forms the part of the traditional Confucian canon. They include the odes, the documents, the rites, the changes, and the spring and autumn annals. Although these texts are attributed to Confucius, uh, he most likely was not involved in their creation as they were written well before his time. The Analects of Confucius 
are a compilation of sayings and experiences of Confucius written by his students, the students of his students, or people who were close to him. The Chinese refer to it as lunyu, or conversations. Confucius would often teach the same topic in a different way to each of his students in the Analects of Confucius. He would also teach by using examples rather than, than defining a topic. It also con uh, contained descriptions of how Confucius performed rituals. Confucius was seen as a role model. Much of his written work survived Qin Shi Huangdi's reign, preserved by scholars who hid the documents and texts. Confucius died believing that he was a failure. His ideas were not accepted by the warring states of his time, and they were not significantly put into practice until the Han Dynasty, that is 206 BCE to 220 CE. Confucius stressed uh, importance on propriety and following the code of ethics known as Li. Confucius also believed that it is important to teach everyone. If people are well educated, they can participate in the government. He believed that a ruler who makes his own people happy and attracts intellectuals from far away is a good ruler. Although Confucius never became a ruler, he became so influential on Chinese culture that he was given the title, the uncrowned emperor. Followers of Confucianism uh, commonly mastered rituals and were artists. Mencius was one of the most famous followers of Confucianism. He lived around 372 to uh, 289 BCE during the Warring States period, whereas Confucius lived during the Spring and Autumn period. He spent most of his life in eastern China, mainly in the state of Qi. Mencius had a wise mother who aided him in his education. Like Confucius, he traveled from state to state, searching for a ruler to adopt his ideas. He adapted ideas and added his own to the school of thought. One concept that he added was that everyone is inherently good. However, people tend to stray off the path of good, and it is a teacher's responsibility to correct the path of their students. He also believed that rebellions were necessary to remove corrupt rulers. Mencius had a strong criticism of people in the upper class um, and those working for the government, uh, much stronger than Confucius did. His teachings are recorded in the book called the Book of Mencius, also known as the Mengzi Shu. Uh, on this slide, you can see a copy of the Mengzi Shu produced during the Ming Dynasty. It contains seven chapters. Each chapter is divided into two parts. Uh, it goes into greater detail than the Analects of Confucius and even mentions debates Mencius had with other intellectuals uh, and the advice that he gave to rulers. Taoism was founded by Lao Tzu around the same time as Confucianism during the spring and autumn period. Lao Tzu's real name was Li Er. He was born around 604 BCE. Lao Tzu was his acquired name once he became famous. It translates to the old master. The term Tao represents the way. It is the origin of all things beyond words and, in, and indescribable. Taoism emphasizes the average person's connection to nature and belief in the spirits. Not a lot is known about Lao Tzu's life in, in contrast to Confucius and his followers. His life was recorded around 100 BCE by Sima Qian in the records of the Grand Historian. Sima Qian uh, believed that Taoism borrows from other schools and puts it into harmony. It is unknown when or where Lao Tzu died, a testament to his renouncement of society. However, he was the keeper of the royal archives at the Zhou capital in Luoyang. He was asked to write a book about his teachings by an official. It became a short compilation of about 5,000 characters directed towards rulers known as the Dao Te Jing, or the classic of the way and its power. The original name was the Lao Tzu, and it started as a oral compilation of sayings. On this slide, you can see the Lao Tzu written on bamboo slips from the Warring States period, unearthed in Hubei province. The book was divided into two sections, the Dao Jing, Classic of the Way, and the De Jing, Classic of Power. The Dao De Jing became one of the most well-known pieces of literature in Chinese culture. Versions were found that date back to the Han Dynasty, uh, which had reverse sections, so it would be known as the De Dao Jing. Uh, it was translated many times and has over 350 commentaries written in Chinese. 
It is the teachings of Lao Tzu filled with sayings of life and nature. Some historians have concluded that it consists of multiple authors. Lao Tzu could be plural as in the old masters. In 1993, archeologists discovered a tomb that dated back to 300 BCE, uh, which contained 804 bamboo slips, consisting of parts of the Tao Te Ching, records of rites, uh, and the documents. Phrases from the Tao Te Ching could be understood differently depending on who read it. Sayings such as, conduct your triumph like a funeral. He who feels punctured must have been a bubble. Knowledge studies others, wisdom is self-known, are left to the reader to interpret. Words as Lao Tzu believed were, tri were a trivial creation of society. And to experience something is much more than words can describe. Lao Tzu referred to a good ruler as one who is not well known. Well known rulers are usually well known for their infamy or conquest. Some Taoists even believe that Lao Tzu went to India and founded Buddhism, which is quite controversial. The term Taoism or Tao Jia was not used to describe a group of people until the Han Dynasty. And people referred to as Taoists during the Eastern Zhou Dynasty uh, wouldn't have considered themselves even as Taoists. Guangzi, uh, who lived between 369 to 286 BCE, was a famous quote unquote Taoist uh, who lived during the Warring States period. He was, <clears throat> he was believed to have been a follower of Lao Tzu. However, it is likely that he did not even consider himself a Taoist, and his teachings were quite different from Lao Tzu. A popular example of his teachings were when he dreamt that he was a butterfly. When he woke, he questioned whether he was a butterfly dreaming that he was a human. <coughs> this represents the Taoist belief in returning to nature. When officials from the Chu state asked uh, him to become prime minister, he replied with a story of the corpse of a tortoise that is being worshipped by a ruler. He asked the officials whether the tortoise would rather be with nature. The officials said yes, it probably would. Zhuangzi replied that he too would rather be with nature. Zhuangzi criticized, criticized Confucius for living in society and prided himself on living outside of it. In contrast to Lao Tzu, who was reserved and mysterious, Zhuangzi was very charismatic in his teaching. He would often debate people who disagreed with him. He was more connected to the spiritual world and disconnected from the material world than Lao Tzu was, and avoids mentioning Wu Wei, or non-action. Zhuangzi refers to a perfected person as one who breaks away from society. Uh, he rejected society completely, whereas Lao Tzu tried to give advice to rulers. There was no concept of good or evil for Zhuangzi. He also believed opposites to be equal. The Zhuangzi was a 33 chapter work of literature and stories attributed to Zhuangzi, uh, and it challenged ordinary ways of thinking. On this slide, you can see a copy of the Zhuangzi produced during the Ming Dynasty. However, the popular compilation that is read today was compiled by Guo Xiang in 312 CE. The texts are from many centuries, um, and some even precede the Tao Te Ching. The first seven chapters were probably written by Zhuangzi, while the other chapters were attributed to other authors. It became a popular Taoist piece of work with strands from many different texts. Moism, also known as Mo Jia, was founded by Mo Ti or Mo Zi around 479 to 438 BCE. Mo Zi was born in the state of Lu, like Confucius. His school of thought was based on the improvement of society, like Confucianism, uh, rather than the rejection of society. Moists practiced self-defense and the building of fortifications. Many architects, for this reason, practiced Moism. They believed warfare only to be necessary for self-defense. Moists would even sacrifice their lives to stop violence, and they interfered in battles in such a way. According to Sima Tian, uh, Moists revered the Tao, ate from earthen plates and bowls, and in the winter they wore the skins of deer. This perception of Moists makes them appear connected to nature similar to Taoists. Mo Zi uh, believed strongly in the spirits, and that faith in the spirits uh, would enlighten a person. 
However, he detested extravagant ceremonies. Moists wanted all men to love each other as they love their families. This idea was opposed by Amentius because it would destroy the idea of a family, which in turn would destroy society. Amentius strongly disagreed with Moism. After the Warring States period, Chinchur Huangdi greatly opposed the practice of Moism, and its teachings were nearly lost. In contrast to Confucianism, Taoism, and Moism was Bajia, or legalism, founded on the ideas of Shangyang, uh, who lived between 390 to 338 BCE. The term Bajia was invented by Sima Tian. Legalism greatly influenced governments until the present day due to its success. However, a few scholars admire legalism because of its authoritarianism and lack of respect for other schools of thought. Regardless, it became the most successful form of governing during the Warring States period. Sin refers to the force and power required to compete with rival states and was highly valued by legalists. The goal of legalists was to stabilize the region similar to Confucianism and Taoism. They also borrowed from the Taoist idea of Wu Wei, or non-action, or disengagement. Legalists believe that law of the state should be decided by the whole state and not just the ruler. This put no one above the law. Legalists put their faith in the law, while Taoists put their faith in harmony with nature, and Confucians put their faith in ethical, practic ethical practices. Mencius highly opposed leadership through power and control. This school of thought was adopted by the Qin state under the advisement of Xiangyang, known for his success as an administrator and detested for his power and mercilessness. He served under Shao Jing of Qin as chief minister for about 20 years between 361 to 338 BCE uh, and was executed by his successor, Hui Wen, uh, by having his limbs and head strapped to five chariots, tearing his body to pieces. His ideas were preserved in a text known as the Book of Lord Shang. It promoted authoritarianism, giving the ruler the right to gain power through war and slavery. Shang Yang believed that an absolute ruler was the best form of governing. He wanted to revoke the Jing Tian way of land ownership, where the rulers of rich families owned the land and replaced it with individual ownership called Jun Tian. He also wanted to arrange families into groups to better control them, as well as to impose strict laws and regulations. He believed that a strong state with strict laws and harsh punishments would succeed in this time of turmoil. Shang Yang also created regulations for bureaucrats known as Shu. He is well known for making the Qin state very successful. Han Fei, uh, circa 280 to 233 BCE, and Li Se, circa 280 to 203 BCE, are both famous legalist disciples of Sun Tzu, a famous Confucian. Sun Tzu visited the state of Qin in 264 BCE and described it positively, saying that officials carried out tasks in a proper manner and that people respected them. Han Fei students wrote a book about Han Fei called the Han Fei Zi after his death. It explained his idea of a perfect form of governing. Uh, on the slide, you can see a copy of the Han Fei Zi produced during the Ming Dynasty. Han Fei was from the Han state. He believed that, like Sun Tzu, uh, that humans do not act for the benefit of the state and rather act in self-interest. He cited many examples where advisors to rulers would betray them over their own self-interest. Han Fei believed that the situation of the Warring States period was so dire that extreme actions had to be taken. Rulers should follow the idea that everyone acts out of self-interest and refrain from trusting advisors, ministers, and even their own family members. People will use love to deceive the ruler. For this reason, rulers should only put qualified officials into government positions and avoid assigning positions to their family members. It was difficult for him to acquire a job to, due to his speech impediment, according to Sima Tian. Han Fei befriended Li Se, uh, another disciple of Sun Tzu, who was influenced by Han Fei's fascination with legalism. Li Se, uh, became the prime minister of Zhao Zheng, also known as Qinshu Huangdi, bringing with him Han Fei's text to promote legalism. He's well known for leading the Qin state to great success. 
Out of jealousy, Li Su convinced Zhao Zhang to doubt Han Fei's trustworthiness and to imprison him. Li Su murdered Han Fei by poisoning his drink while he was imprisoned. The government in a legalist state controlled many aspects of the economy, <coughs> such as trade and agriculture. Li Su is infamous for advising Qin Shi Huang Di to bury Confucian disciples and to burn books. Sima Qian believed that followers of legalism do not distinguish between relatives, royalty, and commoners when judging under the law. They also were very strict and lacked kindness. Legalists believed in an authoritarian form of governing rather than a harmonious society. Strict laws and harsh punishments was the way to create a good society according to legalists. They believed, like Sun Tzu, uh, that humans were born evil and should be controlled by the state. Legalism taught that the Confucian idea of Li or propriety, laws that are not fixed but are what is socially acceptable at the current time and place, was insufficient for a successful state. A successful government should also adopt positive law, or fa. These laws involve actions rather than possessions. A system of law and punishments was known as sing. The term originally referred to decapitation. However, it evolved over time to be used for a system of laws. Confucius, uh, Confucians did not agree with the ideas of sing. Instead, they proposed that communities should decide what is socially acceptable behavior and run their societies based on ethics instead of written law. Legalists believe that people are harmful and must be confined by strict laws in order to control their bad behavior. The state and people running the government are also to be very well respected. During this time there were of conflict uh, the expansion in ways of thinking and technological progression was accompanied by a transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. The competition during this time between states generated a scenario where innovation flourished. The innovation of iron tools during the spring and autumn period helped to increase the amount of produce harvested by agriculturalists. The building of fortifications was also aided by the use of iron tools and gears. The Chinese were the, one of the first civilizations to use iron around the spring and autumn period. It helped them to advance at a much faster rate than other civilizations of the time. China also had the most skilled metallurgists. They were able to mass produce these iron tools with the use of iron casting by the 4th century BCE. This allowed them to build things such as fortifications at a much faster rate. In Europe, iron was restricted to the forge until 1350 CE. Other technological advancements include agriculture, uh, new forms of irrigation, drainage methods, the use of iron tip plows drawn by oxen, improved calendars, and the use of animal and human fertilizer. There's also advancements in crafting techniques, such as engraving and inlaying with silver, copper, gold, turquoise, gilding, and gold plating. There's innovations with the currency system. A currency system did not even develop until the Zhou Dynasty. Prior to this, goods were exchanged for other goods. However, exchanging goods for other goods was still a common practice during the Zhou Dynasty. There's also advancements in the military, such as crossbows, swords, cavalry, and unconventional infantry tactics, which made uh, chariots obsolete. There's also the invention of stone hurling, hurling vehicles, known as catapults, and also there's advancements in fortification techniques. On this slide, you can see a crossbow a uh, trigger made of bronze and inlaid with silver used during the Warring States period, and a crossbow from the Qin Dynasty excavated from the burial pit of Qin Shi Huangdi. New styles of warfare and weaponry for infantry were adopted to counter chariots such as crossbows, swords, and cavalry, and unconventional infantry tactics. Some legends refer to the Yellow Emperor, also known as Huangdi, circa 2698 to 2598 BCE, as the inventor of the bow or cro and crossbow, as well as the famous archer Yi. However, according to the Sunbin, according to Sunbin, the crossbow was invented during the Warring States period. Crossbows had greater accuracy and range than bows. However, they had a slower rate of fire. The Wu Zi, a famous book written by Wu Qi, 440 to 381 BCE, 
uh, states that shorter men generally were used as infantry, while taller men were used as archers and crossbowmen. Swords during the spring and autumn period were shorter than the Warring States period, and they were usually made out of bronze. This, uh, the iron sword on this slide is an exception. It is from the Jin state and has golden guards. It must have been owned by either the royal family, a powerful state, or a wealthy family because iron was quite rare and expensive during the spring and, uh, spring and autumn period. Chinese swords are classified into two categories. Dao and has, the Dao has a single edge blade and comes in many shapes. The Jin has a straight double edge blade. The Dao can be long, short, straight, or curved, broad, or compact. The defining feature is that single edge blade. The use of the Dao dates back to the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, um, which were made of bronze. Swords during the Shang Dynasty and Spring and Autumn period were much shorter than the, the Warring States period, um, and they were used for thrusting rather than slashing. The blade and hilt were molded together without a perpendicular guard to protect the hands from uh, such slashing techniques. Larger and more advanced swords designed for slashing in the Warring States period led to the end of chariot warfare. It also encouraged the use of cavalry. However, spears and dagger axes were the primary weapons of the ba battlefield and not swords. Here we have a bronze sword from the spring and autumn period that was probably owned by Guang, the ruler Guang of the Wu State. One of the most influential uh, and widely used weapons in ancient China was the ko or dagger axe. Dagger axes are often referred to as halberds in Western sources. However, dagger axes are designed for severing and cutting, while halberds are designed for crushing and piercing. There is a noticeable difference in the design of the blades and their functions. Bronze dagger axes were discovered by archeologists who date them back to the Eastern Zhou Dynasty and the Warring States period, as well as jade dagger axes from the Shang Dynasty. Dagger axes were usually made out of bronze during the Zhou Dynasty and they were, usually made, uh, they were usually much bigger than the preceding Shang Dynasty jade dagger axes, which were small, one-handed, and used by infantry with shields. Dagger axes became larger, two-handed, and had a good weapon for chariots during the spring and autumn period. The blade of a dagger axe evolved uh, from the crescent shape of the Western Zhou Dynasty into the spear-headed chur of the spring and autumn period, and became the most widely used weapon of the Warring States period. Chur blades uh, with multiple heads were designed uh, during the Eastern Zhou Dynasty by lining crescent blades. On the slide, you can see a triple-bladed dagger axe from the Zheng state. However, they were mainly used by the states Wu, Yue, and Chu. Uh, they became obsolete by the end of the Warring States period. And here we have a jade dagger axe uh, used during the Shang Dynasty. Um, it was probably used in one hand uh, with a shield. <coughs> On this slide, you can see the design of a typical two-horse chariot, uh, and which would have been used during this period. A chariot is a wheeled vehicle with a curved shaft uh, and a square frame drawn by at least two horses, harnessed by a yoke uh, on the horse's withers. This was the only way to harness the horse before the invention of the horse collar and breast strap. Chariots were both used as both weapons in war as well as ceremonial parade objects for royalty and upper-class nobility. They were also used in hunting along with uh, the composite recurve bow. In 2003, construction workers uncovered the remains of a Zhou Dynasty horse and chariot burial pit in Luoyang. The team of construction workers quickly handed the author uh, authority over to archeologists. It is now the Museum of Luoyang, Eastern Zhou Royal Horse and Chariot Pits. In these burial pits, archaeologists discovered horse chariot teams with six as well as four and two horses, and even hunting dogs. 26 chariots, 70 horses, and seven dogs were discovered at these pits. Some chariots were made of bronze. During the Warring States period, siege weaponry was evolving and becoming more useful, as well as the number and quality of fortresses. This made the strategy of avoiding an assault on a fortress no longer viable. The use of tunnels, rerouting of rivers, battering rams, siege towers, and catapults were applied to siege warfare. 
On this slide, you can see a replica of a catapult or stone hurling vehicle uh, first used during the spring and autumn period. The spring and autumn period profoundly influenced the Warring States period during the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. It is impossible to describe the Warring States period without first explaining the spring and autumn period. Interpreting the spring and autumn period without mentioning the outcome of the Warring States period is, ne is neglecting its overall impact. Schools of thought and styles of warfare were adopted and adapted by governments through the constant state of conflict. A transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age was accompanied by an expansion in ways of thinking and technological progression. The competition during this time between states generated a scenario where innovation flourished. The ways of governing schools of thought, styles of warfare, and political history have differences and similarities when comparing these two periods. The differences are due to an experience of rapid growth during this time. However, the multi-state system and continuous warfare remain constant throughout these two periods. <laughs>